Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines Live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerhold, Managing Editor of the Register, and my guest today is Steve Dentelbach, uh, the Ohio Attorney General candidate on the November ballot, former U.S. Attorney in Cleveland and former Assistant U.S. Attorney in Cleveland. He'll be joining us in just a moment, but before we go there, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. If you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. Is that right, 624? I think that's right. You'd think I would know that by now, but call them. If it's not 624, it's 627. Uh, Jilly Burns is here. I want to say hello, Jilly, producing this segment of Between the Lines. And with that, we'll introduce Mr. Dettelbach. Did I say that right? Yes. Dettelbach. Well, congratulations on being the nominee of the Democratic Party. Thank you. For Ohio Attorney General. Uh, and, you know, you were a guest here last year, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate you coming back today. What do you have to do to win this contest in November? You know, I think what we have to do is speak to the issues that affect Ohioans, uh, that affect their lives. Uh, you know, you look around the state of Ohio, you travel around the state of Ohio like I am these days, and, you know, you see people... Uh, who are hurting and who aren't getting a lot of help from the people in Columbus. And I go to Columbus uh, and I go to that State House Square area and look in that State House and you know, I've been a prosecutor for, for two decades, uh, over two decades. And I will tell you, I don't think I've ever seen uh, a political culture that is more corrupt or, or more broken than what's going on in that State House right now. And that's saying something because I've seen some bad ones, but you know, I will tell you, you know, we, what we have right now going on in Columbus is uh, we have one-party rule, right? And, and by the way, this isn't a Democrat or, or Republican thing. In my experience looking at these things, uh, one-party rule on either side leads to government that gets too cozy and uh, eventually leads to government that gets too greedy mm -hmm. and forgets about the problems of the people. And if you look in Columbus now, what are we looking at? We're looking at two separate FBI investigations. We're looking at the Speaker of the House of Ohio. Forced to resign. And having his home searched by the FBI right. just a couple of weeks ago, forced to resign. And then the Republicans who have a super majority because they've gerrymandered the State House, right? They can't even pick a replacement without fighting. And all that while, what happens? None of the business of the people of Ohio gets taken care of. Bills that involve extending uh, survivor benefits for widows and survivors of fallen police officers mm -hmm. stall. Uh, payday lending reform. Mm -hmm. But you know, the payday lending reform the pay, was what the speaker got in trouble for because he was taking uh, fancy trips, I guess, from the payday lending lobbyists. And, and the payday lending reform, which the people of Ohio passed by ballot initiative, uh, overwhelmingly, just a few years ago, you know, the payday lenders and the guys in the state house ignored it. And what happens? Two hundred grand a day, I read, gets charged to Ohio working families that you know above and beyond. Unsuspecting right. people borrowing money on terms they don't really understand. And, and, and just try, I mean, look, uh, people are allowed to charge interest on loans, but Ohio is the highest, I believe, <laughs> in the country. Five hundred ninety-one percent <laughs> annualized interest. And the, the shocking thing about it is, it, it really shows you the state house culture. The people of Ohio went to the ballots to change it. Change it yeah. And then these guys found a loophole, and the guys in the state house were, were ready, willing, and able to help them. And so, and then the other one, the other investigation is, of course, what we talked about before, which is now really just hit, which is the, the ECOT. And you brought that up when you were here in October yeah. as well. And, and finally, I think people have started paying attention to it in the community. Finally, ironically, after years and years of letting these guys get away with, we think, $80 million this in stolen is the, funds. This is the uh, electronic school program in Ohio. That's right. So, so ECOT. It's, it's one company, the Electronic Classroom of Tomorrow. Yeah. By the way, great marketing, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're supposed to be like a, a school without walls. What we found out is it's a school without students. And without uh, standards. Right. So the kids are, are failing. They're not, there's no proof that they're actually attending these electronic classes. And they keep sending the bills in. And, you know, the guys in Columbus who they're sending massive campaign checks to keep on paying the bills, including, by the way, the auditor of our state, uh, who is the guy I'm running against. Mr. Yost. Yeah, it's an overbilling scandal. And the auditor of our state gives them clean audit after clean audit after clean audit speaks at their graduation ceremony three times and gives them awards, auditors' awards for excellence 
uh, based on their record keeping, which we now know they're overbilling us. So and overbilling us to the tune of eighty million U U.S. Eight, well, million? it's eighty million and counting, right? It's eighty million in one two-year period. And so that's that's eighty million taken directly from the public schools yeah, in the, Ohio. Yeah, the way it works is they wrote the law uh, so that if a kid in the Sandusky schools decides to sign up for ECOT, right. About seven thousand dollars get taken away from Gone. the schools. Gone. Ten kids, seventy grand. Mm -hmm, right. That's mm -hmm. like a math teacher now fired mm -hmm, mm -hmm, from the Sandusky mm -hmm, schools. Mm -hmm. That's ten kids in one year alone. I believe the numbers are that ECOT billed the state of Ohio for over fifteen thousand kids. Mm. It's like another Big Ten school, like right here in Ohio. And these guys just let them get away with it year after year. And you ask me eighty. The reason I say eighty and counting is I haven't seen any. I've been a fraud prosecutor for a lot of years. Very few fraud schemes start at 11.59 p.m. on December 31st. So we found that they cheated for two years. Don't you think we ought to go back and, and, and see, see whether they were cheating the other 15 Interesting. before? Interesting. And you mentioned that it's not a Democrat issue, it's not a Republican issue. In Columbus right now, it's skewered toward Republicans. They're the party in power and have been for 20 years. Uh, but in Cuyahoga County, it was Democrats, and, and you took on that battle. Well, my office did, right? Your office The U.S. Did. Attorney said I wasn't but part you were of that. Part, okay. No, because uh, that wasn't the case that I was part of, mm -hmm. but, but that is a case that I headed the office that did that case, and uh, I also personally prosecuted lots of public corruption cases mm -hmm. during, my, during my time as, as U.S. Attorney, but that was a case I was accused from. So okay. I, didn't, I didn't work on that case. Well, what is the role of Attorney General? So you've got ECOT and you've got public corruption in Columbus, you're seeing. So what is the role of the Attorney General in that issue? Do, so, do so, you fight crime? Yeah, so are, you the, are you the number one crime fighter in, in Ohio? Well, yes and no. So, so the Attorney General, let's talk big picture. Okay. The real thing that the Attorney General is supposed to do is fight for the basic idea that everybody in the state of Ohio should be playing by one set of rules, mm -hmm. all right? It can't be that there's one set of rules for people who have uh, everybody on their speed dial and write big campaign checks and another set of rules for the rest of us. Is that the way it is? I, it is. It is. It yeah. is. I mean, when you see payday lenders, when you see ECOT, and, and, and then you see the people who take these payday loans uh, who are working families who get taken advantage of, and you see uh, the school districts that we all you know, rely on uh, that are the backbone of our state, you know, getting millions and millions and millions of dollars taken away from them. So this guy, Bill Lager, can build a, a can buy a condo in Key West for $3.7 million. Yes, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. is the way it is. Mm -hmm. So that's the big thing. And then on each issue, you know, that's the test for the Attorney General. You know, is the Attorney General going to be on the side of special interests or is the Attorney General going to be on the side of the people? And that means when a charter school is overbilling the state, when a charter school isn't doing the right thing, you know, uh, a for-profit charter school is not doing the right thing, you, you take action against them, you know. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, local police departments and prosecutors are really the front line in fighting crime. And it is so important that the people in Columbus get out of their head that they're the center and the be-all and end-all of everything and start supporting local police and prosecutors. And what's happened in the last seven years, you know, as the opioid epidemic has ramped up, as thousands and thousands of Ohioans die every year, is we've cut the local government fund by 55%. That means that people who are in charge of treating people with addictions in local communities get their budget cuts and mm -hmm. beds disappear. It means that police departments are asked to do more with less over and over and over again so we can suck money to Columbus uh, and pretend that Columbus is the be all and end all. And it's not. In the law enforcement world, the attorney general needs to support local law enforcement. You also have a leadership role, but you've got to support and have their backs. And, and has, has, let's talk about the current attorney general. Has he been a successful attorney general in your view? Oh, gosh. You know, I hate talking about other uh, people. Uh, look, let's, let me just say this. I think I would have different priorities and a different mm -hmm. orientation than the current attorney general. Mm -hmm. uh, the cur for me, the job of attorney general isn't about, uh, you know, 
holding press conferences, uh, you know, and in 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 cases where, you know, families murdered mm -hmm. in Southern Ohio, uh, it's about trying to support local law enforcement and getting something done. Uh, it's about handling those bigger, harder cases uh, in the office yourself and letting the work speak for itself. Uh, that's what the job of being attorney general is about to me, I, and it's about the idea of making hard decisions, even if they go against your party, even if they go, you know, you're ba making decisions based on the law. You're, we have to get the politics out of that. How, how do you do that? I mean, how, how do you, uh, Steve Gentlebach, do that? How do you keep the party, uh, you know, where it should be? How, how do you, you know, that's my career, right? I didn't grow up. I'm an outsider mm -hmm. to this. I'm not part of the Democratic or Republican Party apparatus. I was a federal prosecutor mm -hmm. for 20 plus years. Uh, and, and to me, that's the system I grew up in, which is you make hard decisions, you make decisions, mm -hmm. and you move cases that ought to be moved. And if there are cases where there's not enough evidence and you don't bend to public pressure and do those cases either, you know, I. To me, the job of a prosecutor, I once heard a, another prosecutor describe it like this, and it really stuck home with me. I'm a basketball player and, you know, uh, and a basketball fan, and, you know, big Cavs fan, so right now. I'm very, <laughs> you're having a good excited. time. Yeah, but I would say, Tonight. You, know, you know, when you're watching uh, the NCAAs or some big game, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody gets a free throw, right? And they go to the free throw line, and they're looking, they're shooting the shot. And what's going on behind the backboard, right? Thousands of kids are waving whatever they can wave, mm -hmm. those big hands or noodles. The job of a prosecutor is to tune that out. Is to stay focused. And focus on your task, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is oftentimes not glamorous and not sexy. It's making a foul shot, mm -hmm. which is, means making the correct call on a, on a, on a case. And that's what you do. And by the way, mm -hmm. it just so happens, this guy said, and he's right, if you want to shut the people up behind the basket, you know what the best thing you can do is? Yeah. Make the shot. Make the shot. Make the shot. Not get caught do you, up. Do you, do you use basketball in a lot of the way you view your job? No, but, you know, <laughs> to me, that really struck home with me, which is it's easy for politicians to get caught up in trying to just do what people are saying or to please everybody, right. you end up pleasing nobody. Uh, for me, my career as a prosecutor has been about making decisions on cases the best I could at the time that was appropriate based on the evidence in the case, not based on who was happy and who was sad about it, and you do your Interesting. job. Interesting. And, uh, you know, what differentiates you from your opponent? Why should voters select you over David Yost? Well, I think we're just different candidates, right? I mean, I am a career prosecutor. He's a career politician. Mm -hmm. He's been running for office after office. He's term limited out of his auditor's job, you know, um, and because the, I guess, the auditor's job isn't available to him anymore, he's switching jobs and doing this musical chairs thing, and now it's his turn to be the attorney general, so that's what he's running for. You know, for me, uh, you know, I came up as a prosecutor. I am a prosecutor. It's who I am in my core. It's what I care about. And, uh, you know, I want to be the Attorney General of this state. That's the job I want. Interesting. That's Isn't the job I care about. I love being a lawyer. I love being a prosecutor. Uh, and that's what I want to do. And have you held elective office before? I haven't. So, so you're reaching high. <laughs> yeah, well, I was appointed by the President of the United States to serve as the U.S. Attorney. So I, I held office. It was an elected office. Was that uh, President Obama? It was. I was okay. appointed, and I served uh, uh, both terms of the administration as the head fed right. for the northern half of the state. So a big right. territory, a big job, six million people, uh, offices in Toledo, offices in Cleveland, Akron, and Youngstown. I'm really proud of the work that the office did when I was there. Uh, but this political part of it that you're asking me about, that's the part that's new. And, you know, to me, I'm not going to sort of go by the playbook. I'm, I'm going to do the, what I think is right. And the political pundits uh, uh, will say what they say. And, uh, you know, hopefully the people will see that they want to change. All right. Um, how do you win in November? Am I being signaled to it's time to finish up? Okay. How do you win in November? 
Yeah, you're Two talking. more questions. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, uh, I don't want to finish up. I like this. But, you know, <laughs> to me, uh, you win in November by talking about the fundamental idea of, you know, you don't get caught up in, in the political tit for tat. You win in November about talking about the fundamental ideas of having Ohioans backs, right? And that's a message. You don't change your message when you're in Cleveland versus when you're on the Ohio River working in Marietta, being in Marietta where I was earlier, uh, or, or uh, whether you're in Chillicothe, when you're in Lima or Lorraine, or you know, Port Clinton or Portsmouth, and you talk about these issues that Ohioans care about. You talk about making sure that they understand they're going to have one set of rules and there's not going to be one set of rules for people with connections and one set of rules for everybody else. You talk about making sure that consumers are protected mm -hmm. from people who are preying on them. You talk about you're, you're making sure that you're protecting, you know, their, their, the dollars that they spend on health care. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about these kinds of things that are core. Uh, you talk about fighting the heroin and opioid crisis in this state, which has been allowed while these guys in Columbus are fighting with each other to balloon out of control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you talk about supporting local law enforcement wherever it is. These are the things, that's how you win. You don't win by, you know, uh, playing that inside state uh, uh, house game by, you know, this one calls that one. You win by getting around the state and talking to communities and listening to what the problems are that they're facing. And last question, um, you want to debate your opponent? Of course. This fall? And I think, by the way, I think it's the people's right to have uh, to have candidates who are willing to discuss the issues in front of them. And has he, he given you any indication he's willing to debate? It, it hasn't been discussed. It's too early. Well, I wanted to make sure that you had our invitation uh, to debate here in our community. Well, thank you. Uh, at uh, the largest venue we can find to, to fit the most people in. Uh, and I would say, and I, I repeat this, is that the Register has as much experience producing political debates as any media company in the state of Ohio, and we'll do it better than anyone. We promise you a fair debate, and we invite you and Mr. Yost to debate here in our community. Well, that's great. I, 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 as I said, I, I really do think it's the people's right to have the candidates debate in ways that are accessible to them. So uh, uh, I guess we'll figure out where the different debates are, but, uh, and, and of course I can't speak for my opponent, but I, I think debating is important. We'll follow it up. Uh, Steve Dettelbach, the Democratic candidate for Ohio Attorney General. Thank you for being here. We hope you come back well, well. Before, the, uh, before the campaign is over. Thank you very Multiple much. Multiple times, yeah. if you wish. I'd very like nice to. to see you again. That's it for this edition of Between the Lines Live. All of our Between the Lines Live segments can be found at SanduskyRegister.com slash BTL. Thank you. <laughs>